Whoa, somebody spiked this drink. Hey, Internet, I'm Steve. Welcome to Raffo. Hemallergy, the ickiest magic system in the Cosmere, and the only confirmed and negative system we've seen so far. And negative systems result in a net loss of investiture. I previously compared Alamanti to a high yield bank account and positive, and ferrukemi to stuffing money under your mattress, and neutral. Hemallergy functions like a predatory wire transfer service. Sure, some money goes through, but along the way, much of it mysteriously disappears. Also, it's straight up murder. The secrets of Hemallergy aren't really revealed until the latter end of the original Mistborn trilogy, so be wary if you haven't at least finished Hero of Ages. So how does it work? Well, let's say this is you, or more appropriately, your spirit web. And you see your buddy over there with a really cool bit in his spirit web. So you take your buddy, stab him through the heart, and literally staple that cool bit of spirit web of his onto yours. Fundamentally, that's the mechanism for hemallergy. In fact, there's some surprisingly accurate corollaries, but we'll get to that in a bit. In order to be fully effective, hemologic spikes must touch flowing blood in order to receive and transfer a charge, the hema part of hemology. Once charged, though, that stored investiture will go through exponential decay if left outside a body, effectively an investiture half-life, eventually dissipating to a functionally non-usable minimum amount, though never losing it completely. This decay can be lessened by storing the spike in blood, or potentially encasing it in aluminum, though the specific details of these processes are unknown. While it can potentially be used anywhere in the Cosmere, and in fact we've apparently seen it on Roshar already, Hemallergy originated on Scadrial, and, like the two other Scadrian magics, uses the same base of 16 metals as its focus, again divided into four groups of four. Interesting side note, since Hemallergy existed before Allomancy, the original Terrace Prophecy spoke of the piercings of the hero, the symbols we think of as the Allomantic alphabet were probably originally used to reference hemallergic metals. Huh! Brandon originally had some troubles figuring out how hemallergy was supposed to work. Because there's only 16 metals, not counting god alloys, but 32 total abilities in both allomancy and ferrochemy, there had to exist a way to differentiate between what you wanted to steal. Additionally, wasting allomancers to create coloss and other hemallergic constructs seemed like an incredibly inefficient way to do business. So you had to be able to steal stuff from normal people. This is where we get to bind points. Hemallergy in the Cosmere is directly inspired by acupuncture, which historically states that an individual's life force, or chi, flows outward from your chakras. Chakras! Chakras! Chakras everything is good! Yum! Along specific channels called meridians. Most acupuncture points are located along these meridians, typically associated with a specific organ or effect. With hemallergy, aspects of your spirit web are similarly correlated to physical positions on your body. So a steel spike placed in your chest would have a different effect than the same spike in your eye socket. Each metal is attuned to a different attribute as well, so a bronze spike here would have a different effect than a pewter spike. That's just so satisfying. Like with the stapler though, while hemallergy does add things to your spirit web, it also pokes holes. These holes, cracks in the spirit web, allow for other sources of powerful investiture to exert some influence on the user. This is how the Lord Ruler and later Vin and Elend were able to control the Kolos and Chandra in Era 1, as well as how Harmony and then Ruin exert control over their agents. So, according to the Hemallergy chart, there are hundreds of hemallergic bind points in the human body, though apparently a max of 47 in Steel Inquisitors, each of which can be used by any metal from the appropriate quadrant. Physical, mental, temporal, and spiritual. The body seems to be divided into two halves top to bottom, with six rows of spike placements, physical at the top, going to spiritual at the extremities. This may simply be related to the order in which an inquisitor gets their spikes. The attributes stolen by physical and mental metals are more fundamental and necessary for initiate inquisitors, with temporal and spiritual added later. Even so, with every instance of spiking we've seen, as with, spoilers, spook, 
Penrod, Zane, Quellian, even Vin, the spike is fairly close to a bind point of the right quadrant. And really, the spiritual medals and half of the temporal weren't even known about in the Lord Ruler's time. Which is one reason we know that the Hemallergy chart is probably from later on, Wax and Wayne era. Which raises the question, is someone making new Inquisitors during Era 2? Concerning. Only half of the 16 basic metals can actually steal other metallic arts. Basically, one metal can steal anything from a whole quadrant of the other two tables. But each spike can only steal one ability. In the physical and mental quadrants, the pure metal steals chunks of an individual spark of life, the latent investiture of the soul, and the alloy steals innate investiture, added investiture typically associated with a shard. Temporal metals all steal innate. Spiritual, all steel spark. So really, the hemallergic metals could be categorized like this. Ability metals and attribute metals. Steel spikes steal physical allomantic powers, so pulling and pushing with iron and steel, and tin eye and pewter arm abilities. Pewter can steal physical ferrochemy, storing weight, speed, senses, and muscles. Brass steals cognitive ferrochemy, zinc, brass, copper, and bronze, with mental speed, warmth, memories, and wakefulness, respectively. Bronze steals mental allomancy, rioting and soothing, and hearing or hiding pulses. Gold will steal the hybrid ferrochemical powers of storing health, breath, energy, and determination. Cadmium does the same metals for allomancy, golden electrum, cadmium, and bendaloy. Electrum steals the ability to use allomantic enhancement metals, like duralumin, aluminum, nicrosyl, or chromium. And bendaloy steals those same metals ferrochemically. Again, because one spike can steal at least four different attributes, the intent of the placer with the exact placement of the spike is what determines what is actually transferred. And in order to get access to all four metals in one power, you'd need to get four separate spikes. However, we've seen all these abilities before. The more interesting use to me is with the other eight, the metals that just steal normal human attributes. That sounds boring, I know, but having a little bit extra of a normal person something can really mess you up in spectacular ways. We're gonna get to hemallergic constructs and species here, so again, spoilers. Basically, it all comes down to the nature of investiture. We've seen multiple times through the Cosmere that investiture, when left alone, wants to develop sentience. Spren are an excellent example of this. Additionally, investiture can take on the intent and personality of whatever individual it's connected to like Cognitive Shadows, Threnody Shades, or even at some level Nalthian Breath. In fact, we've seen in Warbreaker that the effect of collected breath given from like-minded people can influence the holder. Breath must be given willingly, so I think its connection is severed more cleanly. Hemallergy is ripped off chunks of spirit web, so there must be more bits of extra intent that come along for the ride. For this reason, these competing intents unnaturally attached to a host spirit web, the recipient of a hemallergic spike becomes fundamentally altered. With enough, or with the right spikes, they can become no longer human. A construct. There are four known hemallergic constructs in the Cosmere at this point. Inquisitors, Coloss, Chondra, and chimeras. Interestingly, those with the most spikes, inquisitors, seem to be altered the least, though most of their spikes steal abilities, not attributes. Innate investiture instead of spark. However, the brain, heart, and other vital organs are shifted around the received spikes in order to still function. Additionally, the sheer amount of spikes in an inquisitor, 11 during the Lord Ruler's time, though Marsh now has at least 21, effectively shreds the spirit web. So in order to hold them together, they require a steel linchpin spike placed between the shoulder blades. The large amount of spikes makes them incredibly susceptible to shard or alimantic control. Kolos, the big blue guys on the Lord Ruler's Brute Squad. I'm on the Brute Squad. You are the Brute Squad only have four spikes, all iron, stealing human physical strength. This has an effect on the physical presence of the recipient, increasing their strength, causing them to continue growing larger until their body can no longer support itself, as well as decreasing their intelligence. It seems these spikes somehow block the physical and cognitive connection for the user, so as the spikes are reused and hemallergically decay, they become more and more human. Side note, it's crazy how much we know about him. The physical and cognitive block in Coloss is particularly interesting in relation to the next type of hemallergic construct, the Chondra, the shape-shifting creatures on Scadrial. Once upon a way back when, when Rashik took the power at the well, he turned all the living ferrochemists into these 
blobs of goo, mist wraiths, somehow putting a block between their physical and cognitive aspects, which impaired their ability to think, kind of like spren. But rather than hemallergically causing that block, as in Kolos, giving them just a little bit of investiture in the form of a pair of spikes helps overcome that blockage, and grants sentience plus a bonus of whatever the metal does. Not just any hemallergic spike will do, however. A mist wraith that eats a coloss wouldn't become sentient, so there must be a specific intent in creating them. These spikes are known as blessings in Chondra society. They grant the Chondra both sentience and the attribute the metal is charged with. Tin, the blessing of awareness, like they're constantly burning a little tin. Iron, the blessing of potency, like a constant shot of pewter. Copper, the blessing of presence, granting increased mental fortitude, memory, and intelligence. And zinc, the rarely used blessing of stability because Brandon forgot about it. But it also gives them emotional fortitude, making them less easy to control. There are other potential blessings than just these four, some of which may grant Chandra access to allomancy, though we don't know if that would just be through the use of the other ability medals rather than the attribute medals. If ability medals are, for some reason, not able to be used as blessings, would that mean the Temporal Quadrant is completely useless for Chandra? It is possible for Chandra to maintain their sentience with just a single spike, though having only one does make them go a little crazy, as we've seen with Palm, who had just the one Trellium spike. Speaking of single Trellium spikes, Chimeras are the last type of construct we've seen. You thought Mist Race were creepy? <laughs> Formerly humans, they have just one trellium spike, which has caused a massive transformation into a canine-like form, running on all four limbs, with thicker skulls, joints that bend the wrong way, and pure black eyes. The single spike allows them to avoid Harmony's control. We don't really know what the spiritual hemallergic metals do. All we've got is what it says in the chart. But I get the feeling they're going to become really significant as the Cosmere progresses. Chromium might steal destiny, which sounds... whoa. Nicrosil steals investiture, which if we go along with my theory on ferrochemical nicrosil, which stores innate investiture, or the ability to use a given magic system, a nicrosil spike might be able to steal radiant surges, sand mastery, or elantrianness. And if that alone doesn't do it, grab a duralumin spike to steal that person's connection as well. Though, you better place that spike really carefully, or else you'll end up with their identity. Seriously, spiritual hemallergy is nuts! Last up is aluminum, which ferrochemists use to store identity, but that got stolen by duralumin. Aluminum, Ralkalest, the unforgeable metal, removes all powers when used in hemallergy. Once again, we don't exactly know what that means, but being the only metal that removes in the recipient, rather than steals from the donor, I think is pretty significant. However, a charged aluminum spike must be different than just an aluminum knife or something, so there must be something added in terms of investiture. Here's my theory. Aluminum does indeed steal a piece of the spirit rep, but rather than stealing an ability or attribute, it steals a blockage. It steals the inability to do something rather than the ability. Kind of weird to think about, but if I'm not able to... Uh, uh, tap dance, or play the guitar, or juggle. Let's just go down the laundry list of things I wish I could do. And a spike charged from my spirit web gets placed into you, then even though you may retain the ability to do those things, do a back handspring, uh, skateboard, draw, you'll no longer have access to that ability. Speak Spanish. Fence. Beatbox. Basically, it's like giving you a stroke in relation to your investiture abilities. You know you should be able to do these things, but for some reason, you can't. Hi, James. He's doing great. There are two more metals we know of that have hemallergic application. The god metals, Atium and Loracium. Atium steals any ability, and Loracium steals them all. Not sure how specific you can be with Loracium, or if you just end up becoming another person. Hemallergy has been described as a great power and great danger to the Cosmere. We know its use isn't limited by geography, lineage, or investiture access. Anyone in the Cosmere with the right knowledge and metals 
could use it. And its abilities are not limited to what we've seen on Scadriel. We've gotten confirmation that Hemalurgy could be used to steal boons or curses from the Night Watcher, spike out the ability to grow a gem heart, trap and then transfer radiant bonds, steal divine breath, isolate Imean hordlings, even grow wings or give a cat human intelligence. We don't yet know what metals would be used to do these things, but one potential use of Hemalurgy that we have seen is granting a person use of both allomancy and ferrochemy. This allows them to use a process called compounding, which will be what my next video will be about. Don't worry, I've already started working on it. Thanks for watching! Subscribe if you haven't already, check out these other videos, and comment below what hemallergic reaction you think is most interesting. I respond to every comment, so I'll read and find out. <laughs>